Well, this started on its own, so we better get started. Um, good morning, my dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. What a beautiful day. Scorching hot here in Australia at the moment, at least on, on our portion of it. We, we've been having 38, 39 degrees the last few days. I think we're coming down to about 34, 35 today. That'll be a relief for us. But God has preserved us through and he preserves us through all things. What a glorious God we have. Jesus Christ is our King and he is coming for us soon. But in the meantime, he's always with us. Now, may I just say we have been having some strange occurrences lately. Um, not sure whether this is man-made or spiritual-made. However, have any of you noticed white noise in your homes lately? Um, a noise that you can't identify, it's just a sound. And then when we go to bed at night, we're getting what you could call an pillow talk. You put your head on the pillow and you hear things. And you think there's something going on outside and you pick your head up and there's no sound and you put it down again. Sometimes it's sounding like music, like a party going on somewhere. And sometimes, like for, for me last night, it sounded like someone talking and sending messages. And it was very, very strange because the messages I was hearing was... Um, it was like a message to a country to accept the rule of the, well, I would put, I don't know what it was because it didn't sound like United Nations, but it was a rule and I didn't identify the rule, the whoever was going to rule, but it was, it was saying hand over your country's um, trust into this group but I couldn't remember the group and then it told me let your money be handled by this group and um, this is weird I'm actually hearing this but when I pick my head up it's not there and then I put my head down and it's almost like a broadcast so I wonder, my loves, has this to do with 5G or 6G? Is this part of this indoctrination or is this something actually coming from the pit up through the bedding? I don't know. Is anyone else having these experiences? I know it disturbs my dad because for him it's like a party going on. He thinks the neighbours are keeping him awake. And I'll go in his room and there is no sound. I'll go outside. There's no one up. I'll try to convince him and he'll seem convinced. But then next thing I know, he's angry about the neighbours again. So this has been going on for a few nights now. And I'm wondering, is it to do with the towers that are along the road from us? So there's that one. And I know for if you're getting it too, you must be feeling a bit tired of this world because, to be honest, I've gone through that myself, feeling tired and I'm just, come on, Jesus. And every day I'm looking, come on, is it today? And when it's not today lately, I've been feeling, oh, I don't like this world because the more we see of it, the less we like it. And the more we see um, how it's coming to judgment. If you saw, and I don't recommend you look because I made the mistake myself of looking at this footage of the Brazilian Mardi Gras parade, which was pure Satan. They actually had Satan in the street. They actually had two Satans killing Jesus as a pantomime going down the street and they had wicked debauchery going down the street and I felt a dark presence once I watched it because I didn't just watch it once 
I was shocked and offended. But then I watched it again. I opened my eyes. I, I broke the covenant with my eyes not to see evil in that regard, not to take it in. I took it in and I tell you I had some issues for a couple of days. My, I was so drained and I had to come before the Lord again and ask him to free me from these bonds that I'd placed myself back into, these chains. And he did, he did, he is gorgeous. And we have been feeling, and I think you may have too, been feeling the weight of the world and the such a desire to leave this world. And there seems nothing good around us anymore. And everyone is accepting evil as good. And it is pulling our spirits down and we just want to be alone. Well, last night in my wanting to be alone, Jesus was there. I'd been calling on him and I hadn't heard from him. Now, I don't say that I hear him audibly. Please, when I say I hadn't heard from him, it's the comfort of him. It's it's not that I'm so connected that he's talking to me. It's not that. But you know when when you hear from the Lord that it's you can feel the comfort, the peace in him. So that's what I mean when I say I haven't I wasn't hearing from him. And this happened last night and it happened in the form of a dream but it it was so wonderfully, and I feel so wonderful having rose from it. I won't tell you the dream, just how it came together. When we are feeling like the whole world is against us and we are totally isolated and we just want to put our heads down and totally go into ourselves and don't want to be part of this world anymore, we feel there's nothing worth living for anymore. And I'm not saying this as a death wish sort of a thing. I'm not saying that. But you know that feeling of, please, no more of this. Well, there I was. And this most beautiful friend. One whose face I've never seen and I still don't believe I saw the face. This beautiful, loving friend knelt before me and was just talking to me. And it was a situation where I had felt like it didn't matter how much I did for others. When it came to my needs, there was no one there for me. The world wanted me to do for it but it, when I needed something, the world didn't help. No one out there cared enough. And I'm not talking about brothers and sisters in, in Christ. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the world relies on us. We do all these things. We go to disasters. We, we um, as, as a body, we go to disasters as a body. We help out with um, poverty and all sorts of things. Always it's the church of believers, not churches. The church of believers, the body of Christ, is always there. But if there's ever a problem the other way, the same world that we have been all this time helping, nurturing and loving turn hate onto us and reject us and cut us out. And this has been very, very manifest lately. In fact, the very media that used to talk about how we need the Christians that come in and, and do all these saving um, towns and cities and all of this, isn't it wonderful? They have all turned and we have been cut out. This is the time we're in. We're in the end times, as you know, so it's going to manifest. But as it manifests, we're going through a change period where we're suddenly feeling this manifestation. 
But here is our Christ, who even though we seem alone, he kneels before us. He's not proud, overbearing, shaking the finger at us. He's there kneeling before us, looking up at us, not looking down at us, but looking up and comforting us. And in the dream, he placed this little puppy, a little baby puppy on my lap. I'd love to have a puppy, by the way. But he placed it on my lap. And it was just there very passive. And I was passive. And when I started to stroke it and give it attention, it started to come alive and exuberant. And it started to reflect the joy into me that it felt and I reflected the joy I felt until together we were joyful and we could lift our eyes and it was put into my mind this is what he has given us he didn't he said I will not leave you I will not leave you without a helper And the helper is the Holy Spirit. But if we leave the Holy Spirit alone and don't give it attention, don't basically feed the Holy Spirit with our love, it is passive. But what did he put in our lap, my loves? He put the Bible, and I have been, last week or so, I have been, looking at the worlds, what they're doing instead of looking in my Bible. And as soon as he said, oh, well, he didn't say it, but as soon as he put this into me, that that little puppy, that love that I was searching for was the Bible. And as soon as I would give the Bible the attention, it would give it back to me and I would be in, the Holy Spirit would be getting fed through the, the word is the food for the Holy Spirit. And he just put it together in such a beautiful way that we need, this is why we need the Bible, because it feeds our soul, but it also feeds the attention to the Holy Spirit. Oh, mosquitoes now. Um, so that was what I, I wanted to tell you about this morning. It was just so loving. And we have to remember that it didn't matter to Jesus that I felt that I was dirty. The world looks for this, the corruption in us. The world looks at anything to mock us with. And they try to make us feel bad. Jesus will kneel before you. And I don't mean in worship, please don't anyone start going that way. But he will kneel before you the way, the way your daddy would kneel before you. And hold your little hands and say everything is all right. This is what our God is. He is our daddy. He is our Abba Father. He is our daddy. And he loves us this much that he would kneel down to us to, to look up into our eyes. He would hold our hands and he would give us comfort. So it doesn't matter what you think the world thinks about you. Yes, we are covered in filth. We have all of our lives sinned. But our helper, the Holy Spirit, is leading us into all righteousness. Our Bible is meant there to feed us and to energise us in the Holy Spirit, to give the Holy Spirit some sustenance that it may work in our lives. Because our faith comes through hearing hearing the word of the Lord. The Bible is the word of the Lord. So that's where we get our strength of faith. So it was all of this in this one little thing of Jesus kneeling and giving me a little puppy. 
and it didn't matter how filthy I was because he's going to clean me in his blood. So the filth on us is not important to Jesus. It's not the starting point that's important. It's the end point. When you've been playing outside as a child in the mud and you've fallen over and hurt yourself, your daddy doesn't come and sit you down and kneel at you and say, now I'm not going to talk to you until you've had a bath. Does he? No. Daddy kneels in front of you and says, it's all right, darling. Let's go and we'll clean you up and you'll feel better. This is our God. He is the most wonderful, wonderful. He died on the cross so that we know that he took up his life again. And we know that he will take our lives up again because we believe in him. Our life is taken up again. He did it all and he's still doing it for you. So don't let this world get you down. You're going to see things. May I recommend if you see it once, don't go back and look again out of curiosity because that's feeding something else, I think. Look at it, realise, yes, that's, that's what we've seen. Deal with it in, in your heart and put it to the biblical understanding. We are there, we are there, we are there. So I'm leaving it short today, my loves. Dad's about to come out of the bathroom now. Yes, there he is, wait on. Yes, the day has started, my darling. So God bless you all. I hope this has been of some help for somebody I pray for you all every day and I pray that God will be in your lives and that you will see the movement of the spirit in you remember to enter your Bibles and put all your trust in the Lord there is no other name by which man may be saved God bless you he loves you beyond measure God loves you, every one of you, and we love one another as he has commanded. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye, my darlings.